Hi there, I am Merida Cave Diver, and today I am going to do a review on the Black Tip Series DPVs, specifically the Black Tip Tech and the Black Tip Travel. Before I begin though, I wanted to give some context around the type of diver that I am and because I think it's relevant to this review. I live in Merida, Mexico. The caves here generally start at around 40 meters and I am certified as a dive master in both PADI and TDI. I have specialties in REC, CAVE, and the Tech Deep series. About 90% of my diving here in Merida is in caves. I enter the caves typically at 40 meters or 130 feet, and I'm in a side mount configuration carrying around five tanks. Three of those tanks are gonna be with general air, 21% oxygen, and then I'm gonna use two for deco. One is 50% nitrox and the other is generally 100% oxygen. So why does any of this matter? Well, the type of review I wanted to do is a little different. I wanted to show the black tip in action. I wanted to show it in a cave type scenario. And I've had a lot of people ask me what type of gear I'm using and how it's holding up to the demands that I place on it. So I think knowing and understanding the type of diver that I am and seeing some footage on the videos of where I go and how I use the DPV will be extremely useful to some of you. With that being said, let's get me off the camera and get you looking at something much more interesting. Okay, here you see the black tip travel in action. And I'm gonna start out with some basic dive footage. As the review progresses, you're gonna see a variety of scenarios that I think are very relevant to this review. Some of these scenarios are going to include passing through restrictions, zero visibility, and some six tank full load situations. In total, I've probably put about 60 dives on the DPVs, and it was very important for me to capture these moments for you because I want you to have the peace of mind and seeing it in action. While I continue the narration, I do really want you to watch the video because this is truly gonna show you the tight spaces, the restrictions we pass through, the water quality, and the different types of scenarios that we encounter and how we actually use the DPV. As a general disclaimer, this video is not sponsored in any way and I am not being compensated. I also wanna point out that in my review, I am not going to cover all of the DPV features because I think there's a lot of great reviews out there already that thoroughly go through the device. And this review is really going to focus more of a tech use and caving scenario. So let's tackle the obvious question first. Why did I pick Black Tip? Well, there are a lot of DPVs on the market and possibly like you, I really didn't know what to expect, what was important and what I needed. Worse, I looked at the hardcore tech DPVs because I'm in caving and I kind of just gave up. I mean, it's a critical piece of gear. I don't want to take any chances, but I simply couldn't just justify $5,000 or more US. So what swayed me was price point. And as much as I don't like to say it, I was really kind of happy that it did. If I hadn't found the black tip line, most likely I would not have a DPV today. So let's talk about the one thing black tip seems to be known for, which is their budget friendly price point and their model lineup. Dive Extras has three models in the black tip lineup, which includes the Travel, which is the smallest, the Tech, and the Exploration. In this review, you will see footage of the Travel and the Tech models. The Travel is a little smaller, and in my opinion, a little harder to control in terms of trim. The Tech for me seemed to be a great balance. I don't have any experience with the Exploration model, but it's a little longer, holds more batteries, and it seemed to be more that I needed because I'm not diving on a rebreather system. However, it's important to note that if you want to upgrade your DPV, you just have to change out the cylinder portion. My dives at the long end will run just over about two hours and about half of that time is spent in deco. So let's call a normal active dive 40 to 60 minutes, depending on depth. I do want to mention that in the footage you're watching, my dive partner prefers the travel and he does the exact same dives I do with the same gear load. So don't let size be your deciding factor in terms of capability. From my experience, the travel and the tech have the exact same capabilities. In terms of price point, I paid about $1,900 US for the tech, and I think the travel runs at about $1,700 US. You do need to consider the cost of batteries, and you do have a few choices. All in, I think I totaled out around $2,400, but let's talk about the batteries for a moment. One of the things that really appealed to me about this DPV is that you could choose the type of batteries that you wanted and that they use regular power tool batteries. I personally use the 20 volt 12 amp batteries, but a lot of my friends use the 9 amp batteries because you can't get the 12s down here. I specifically bring this up because of the travel restrictions. 
There are a lot of different opinions on the internet on whether or not you can travel with these batteries, size requirements, special travel caps, and I can't say I have the right answer for you. I'm also not going to disagree with anyone's counter experiences. For me, when I was in Texas, I purchased the 12 amp batteries and I shipped mine. This decision was based off of a discussion that I had with both United and American Airlines and they just weren't going to accept the travel caps and there was no documentation that I could find that we were all going to agree on. This is combined with somewhat of a roulette experience that I've had with airport security. I just didn't want the headache and an argument before flying. You might have different luck. I'm just sharing what I did and if you have your own story, I'd love to hear about it. I personally could not find any documentation that the airlines would agree to. I could find lots of documentation. I could not find any documentation that the airlines would agree to. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's talk about the DPV experience and performance. Until you really use a DPV, it's very hard to picture how great it is. For caving, I can use the DPV for my initial exploration dives. I can get to new areas of the cave faster. I can minimize the amount of time I spend in familiar areas. And last but not least, if I'm new to an area and I run up against a restriction that I'm not familiar with, I can stage the DPV and then use it as a beacon as seen here. In this particular situation, I was very familiar with the cave, and while I knew I could take the DPV through this restriction, I didn't want to risk zero visibility. In a way, it was a good call because further up, there was another restriction that I could only fit my body through. When using the DPV, I'm typically carrying five lights. Two of them I mount on the front and use as my primary light source, and it also serves as my camera rig. In terms of run times, I have not modified the DPV. You can, but for me, the default settings seem to work very well. With that being said, there are seven speeds, the default being three. In some instances, I will bump up to four or five, but most often I tend to use the default speed of three. With my normal load of three tanks plus two for deco, I can run steady for 40 to 60 minutes and have lots of power left over. In my latest dives where I was running with six tanks, I put the DPV under heavy load, through restrictions, and cycled up to the speed of four for the majority of the dive due to the amount of distance we wanted to cover. This is the footage that you're watching now, and the total scooter runtime was about 90 minutes. I can tell you that the scooter performed exceptionally well, and I still had power after my dive. Because of the nature of my dives and for safety, I do recharge my batteries each and every time. However, I have played around in the pool for a couple hours after a full day of diving and I have not found power or time to be a concern in any way. When it comes to depth and overall toughness, I really wanted my video to speak for itself. In caving, not all travels are smooth travels and you're going to see a variety of terrain. If you move carefully and with purpose, the black tip lineup is well suited to the task at hand. I have thoroughly put the DPV through some challenging scenarios and I don't have any durability concerns whatsoever. For depth, the Black Tip Travel and Black Tip Tech come in at 100 meters and 120 meters respectively, or 330 feet and 400 feet, which is well within my limits. I will say that my typical use range is between 40 meters and 70 meters. Operation is simple. Two quick clicks with your thumb to turn it on, another two clicks to go one level faster, and a single click to go one level slower. The default being three with the minimum speed of one and the maximum speed of seven. I have heard some chatter on handle modifications and I would like to address this with my review. I personally have found that with my harness set to the right length, I can switch hands with no issues, therefore I have not needed to modify my handle. In this clip, you see my dive partner controlling the travel with his left while adjusting his gear with his right. So what should you be aware of? First and foremost, with every part of diving, you need to make sure you get the right training. In caving, things can go from bad to really bad very quickly. The addition of a DPV to your dives is awesome, but know that it will add complexity. The DPV's simplicity is misleading in a way because it's truly effortless. This also makes it incredibly important for you to watch your air, watch your depth, and really watch your ascents. In a cave, you need to be hypervigilant in terms of navigation and watching your markers. It is extremely easy to blow by a marker and get lost in the moment. It's also very easy to suffer from task overload. Know your limits and practice. Admittedly, and perhaps even shamefully, while making this video, I got lost in the moment. We were in a large cavern. I was cruising at a speed of four, looking through the camera at my partner, dedicated to getting that perfect shot. And then I slammed my head into the roof of a cave. I have never been more thankful for my helmet. 
Now, I hate to admit this publicly, but learn from my stupidity. If you've made it this far, then you probably already know what I'm going to tell you. But do I think you should buy a DPV and would I recommend the Black Tip Travel or the Black Tip Tech? The answer is unequivocally yes. I think it's an awesome device and I couldn't be more pleased with mine. For me, the Black Tip Tech is an essential part of my kit and while I do mix up my dives, I generally do prefer my DPV dives. So let's wrap this up and take it back to the harder question. Would I tell you the same thing if the price point was 5,000 US? Without knowing your economic situation, I would have to say no. But this is really what I think makes the Black Tip so special. For the average person, and I am an average person, I think they hit a really nice sweet spot in terms of affordability and use. My goal though through this review was to help show you a different side of use and give you a realistic grasp of reliability, runtime, durability, and risk. Well, we're at the end, and if you've made it this far, I humbly thank you. Hopefully you got some value out of this video, and if so, please give me a like and subscribe. If you have any comments, questions, or just want to pick my brain, feel free to leave them below, and I will do my best to respond to everyone. Thanks very much for watching. I'll include some relevant links below for you.